Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm a political scientist and spiritual advisor. Welcome to my channel. Uh, it's a little bit of everything. And today I promised you a philosophy lesson. And thank you to my new subscribers. I bet you're super cool people. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, today we're doing the philosophy part of <laughs> what I do. Because this is uh, something that's helped a lot of my clients. Today we're going to be looking at um, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. He was a Stoic philosopher, and this was actually um, his journals that, who knows if he intended anyone to see them, but when we did discover them, they were so good that we decided to keep talking about them up until present day, because there's a whole lot of wisdom in here, and that's why we're going to be looking at it today. Okay, um, again, it's chapter eight, and a lot of uh, this chapter is kind of speaking to other philosophers of quit overthinking stuff, don't do, just act. And I'm going to tell you how to act. You know, not me, but Marcus Aurelius. Okay, um, now, like I said, I've used this for, or I think this is a great textbook example of people are coming to me or they're searching for happiness and it's Marcus Aurelius talks about more or less fulfillment why are you chasing the happiness what's that about um and really speaks to why we should chase morality we should think chase things that are useful and good and he makes his argument for that and um this Let's just get into it, okay? <laughs> Book A. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to be, this isn't like for a test. We're not going to be sitting there, or I'm not going to try to teach you all the different ins and outs of it. I'm just going to give you what's useful for you. Yay. Okay. So, Book A, about halfway down, Part 1. You have searched everywhere, and in all your wanderings, you have not found happiness. Not in clever arguments, nor in wealth fame, pleasure, or anything else. Where is happiness then? In doing what a man's nature requires. In doing what you need to do. And how will you do this? By basing your actions and desires on sound principles. What principles? Principles that distinguish right from wrong and demonstrate that nothing is good for a man unless it helps him to be just, responsible, courageous, and free. And nothing is bad that fails to produce the opposite result. So, this is a, this is pre-Christianity. You have to keep in mind, too. But it is this framework of mor morality that goes into that, the same concept that would be building Christianity. What this, I, I just want to clarify, this is on the, outside looking in of all that because there's a when you start getting into different philosophers it's where are we basing our morals on what is this and stoicism itself says let's look at what's good what's useful what's serving each other let's see what nature's doing about it oh nature's up doing its thing maybe i should be up doing my thing too so that's what he's speaking about in this first one okay before you act oh Two, before you act, ask yourself, what are the likely consequences of this act? Now he's talking about why we should practice morality. Will I have cause to regret it? A little while and I will be dead and all will be forgotten. What more can I ask if I am to act as a rational being in kinship with my fellow man and subject to the same law as God? I made so many notes on this. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. If uh, we are cognizant of our mortality, it's going to make us think about things a little bit dif different. And that's what he's talking about here. A little while longer, then I'll be dead. And then what will be left of me? And it can be a little bit morbid. It's this concept in Stoicism is called memento mori. I'm not going to be here forever. So he's talking about making these good decisions after we are long gone and forgotten. 
Okay. Oh, and this last part, I kind of, we're going to touch on that too. What more can I ask if I am to act as a rational being in kinship with my fellow man? And this really talks about, um, if you're living up to, if you're living in kinship with your fellow man, then that is going to help you achieve your personal highest potential of where you can reach. Again, I'm skipping around to some of the parts here too, but I want to highlight number four here. You may explode in rage, but men will still go on doing what they have done. And I think that is such an epic way to say players going to play. You can't change people's nature. Just let them do their thing. <laughs> okay. Now, moving on. Number nine. No one should ever hear you complaining about palace life. No one. Not even your own ears. Especially Americans. Think about what you are complaining about. You have ears to hear it or eyes to read it and a brain to think about things with. Keep that in mind as you're complaining about whatever your situation is. Okay, so now is uh, number 10. It's kind of bring it back to the memento mori side of things. Um, 10. Regret is what we feel when we blame ourselves for failing to take advantage of a useful opportunity. Now, whatever is good is necessarily useful and a pressing concern to every good man. But no such man feels any regret for failing to indulge in pleasure. Pleasure, therefore, is neither useful nor good. Sounds like a nerd, right? Okay, no, just kidding. All right, so this is also talking about um, this feeling of regret and how to uh, avoid that altogether. And it is talking about doing what's right again. And um, I want to reiterate that first line again because... I'm sure we can all think of an opportunity that we didn't seize upon that moment. And Marcus Aurelius, keep in mind, like I said, this is his journal. So he's talking to himself essentially. Of, and that tells me like he's had to learn all these lessons. And I'm sure he learned a whole lot of lessons being at the top and being an emperor about this. So <laughs> again, 10. Regret is what we feel when we blame ourselves for failing to take advantage of a useful opportunity. All right, so let's move down here. This is the juicy part of it. Because <laughs> it's talking about um, other people now. Now we're talking about other people's decision and how we make decisions on who to be around and, and who to play nice with and such. Be nice, you know? All right, 14. Whenever you meet someone, ask yourself straight away, what are the things... <clears throat> what are the things that this person deems good and evil? For, it, for if he holds certain beliefs about pleasure and pain and the causes of each, about fame and, and obscurity, or about death and life, then I won't think it surprising or weird if he behaves in a certain way. Indeed, I'll regard it as inevitable. This kind of goes back to what I was saying in 4 about, like, players going to play kind of thing. Um, this is better said nowadays it's like i'm not worried about your what you're booing i've seen what you cheer for so you can really tell a lot about a person um by just asking that alone so if in another lesson we can take from this it's like if someone's already shady don't give them the opportunity to screw you over because they're gonna do what they do it's an inevi inevitable, as he said. Okay, number 15, same concept as that. Are you surprised to find a fig tree bearing figs? Obviously. Then why wonder at the world when it bears its own peculiar crop of events? What an absurd contradiction. What kind of doctor or sea captain is surprised to find his patient with a fever or a contrary wind blowing? It's like kind of sad. So he's basically saying, duh, that's how it is. 
face it all. Okay. When those other people who are cheering or booing, since they're still people, they have their own opinions. And other people's opinions are not necessarily bad. They can make us question our own. What do I find good? What do I find bad? That's what this could help us do. And that's why he goes into number 16, which this one's sort of a famous one. I kind of like it too. 16. Remember that you don't lose any freedom by changing your mind and accepting the correction of someone who points out your error. After all, it's your initiative, your judgment, indeed your intelligence that makes change and acceptance possible. So <laughs> this um, seems easier said than done, and especially put in the context of modern day. As you may have noticed, uh, people on the internet don't necessarily change their minds very often. That's okay. But that is not a, um, it's kind of explainable through biology. Because if a person lives to 30 something years old, thinking the exact way that they have always thought, and it has kept them alive, well, biology is going to tell them to keep thinking like that. It is what it is. So 17 is what we're going to be reading next. So Again, how I said in the beginning, this um, this book itself, when I say book, I meant like chapter. They just call it book. So book eight itself is talking to the philosophers about like, hey, don't just sit around and think about it. Sometimes you just can't think. You have to act. So 17 sort of talks about this as well. If the decision rests with you, why do it? If with another, who's really to blame? the gods, the atoms. To blame either is pointless. Blame no one. If you can, correct the offender. If you can't, correct his offense. And if if not even that's possible, what's the point in looking for someone to blame? Nothing should be done pointlessly. And so, also, um, again, it's not getting caught in the weeds with stuff. It's you, some things you just can't help, you can't fix. And it's more or less a a conservation of energy because this could be read, especially towards the end. It's like, is this uh, apathy to another person? Is it hate towards another person? It's actually neither. It's choosing how to conserve your energy and figure out what you need to be doing. And sometimes that's just not sitting around thinking about, Hey, the way that you talk and the way that you walk kind of thing. Because is that really the best use for you of your energy? I don't know. <laughs> okay, thanks for hanging in there with me for a philosophy video. Uh, I love you and be nice to each other as always. And go check out this book if you really like what I have to say on it. It's, um, this is The Emperor's Handbook by Marcus Aurelius. It's also known as Meditations. Okay, thanks. Love you. Bye.